One of the things that we need to get very acquainted with in physics is doing vector addition and subtraction. And vector addition can be done in two different ways. The first way it can be done is the graphical method or the head to tail method. We've already done that once before whenever we were looking at the definitions of motion, particularly with how acceleration relates to velocity. And we're going to be doing the same thing now except it's a little different. We have vectors which are pointing in more than one dimension and if I can be honest I think it's a little bit easier because the arrows are not stacked on top of each other. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, one, you can add these in any order that you want to. All right, so for example, our first vector addition that we're going to do is this. And remember that whenever you do vector addition, you just get to place an arrow wherever you want. You make it your starting point, and then you take the tail of the second arrow, and you put it on the head of the first. That's going to give us a resultant, which this is the second important point. You always go from the tail of the first arrow to the head of the last arrow. You never want to put the resultant head to tail. That's a, a big mistake and I see it all the time. Now the two vectors that I've actually drawn here were the vector components from the first example I asked you to try in the last videos. So the x dimension should have a value of 71.3 and the y dimension should have a value of 36.3. Now getting back to my point though and that is that you can add these in any order. So it's quite possible that you said you know what I want to start by placing this vector first and then head to tail I'm going to place my other vector. And what do we get? the exact same result. Now the whole drawing looks a little different but it's the exact same result. Here's another one. Again this was an example that I asked you to try last time. So we have a vector that points straight up and then we have another one head to tail. It's going to point to the right and that gives us this resultant vector. And since we did this as an example, we already know what these values are going to be. And uh, this value is 154. And this value is 183. Now, head to tail vector addition, it's really only good for... Uh, getting the big picture. I know I've said that a couple times already but I can't emphasize it enough. It's only good for the big picture and the reason being is it doesn't provide you with precision at all. If you want to get a really precise uh, head to tail picture you have to make your picture very large. So when we're doing these most of the time they're approximate sketches. So if you know something is about twice as long as the other, you just make your arrow about twice as long. But you don't get into scaling it out with a ruler. That's on a practical level. If you wanted to, you could definitely scale it out. So in order to get the resultant, what you would have to do is measure the length of this using a ruler, and then you get your angle by using a protractor. And the same thing here. Now, suppose we have a different situation. We have three vectors. And let me draw those very quickly. I'm just going to draw three random vectors. And so we have vector A points like this, vector B points like this, and vector C maybe just points straight across. And let's go with something like well, let's go with something like that. Why not? Okay. And I'm even going to label these. So we have vector A, vector B, and vector C. 
Take a moment right now and add these three vectors head to tail. Okay, so we have, I'm going to just do it in order, vector A, B, C, vector A, head to tail, vector B, head to tail, vector C. So the resultant vector should be up and to the left in just a small vector. Now, what if you added it A plus C plus B? Well, this was, let's get these out of the way. All right, so we have vector A. Vector C was straight left. And then we add vector B. And did anybody see my mistake? Doesn't look right, does it? Here's the mistake. I didn't start at the origin, which is right here. This is where I should have started with vector A. And what did I do? I put it on the head here. So that was a mistake. But if you shift everything as it into the place that it should be, everything works perfectly fine. Okay, what about get my vectors put back. What does vector A plus C look like? Vector A plus vector C it's going to be equal to the resultant. And so that's what A plus C looks like. Our resultant is the dotted line. Remember, we start with the tail of the resultant at the origin of this whole thing, or the tail of the first arrow, and we take it to the head of the last. All right, let's take a look at vector A plus B. Try that one on your own. Okay, so this is what you should get. Vector A, head to tail, we put vector B, and our resultant is going to point slightly up and to the right. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do vector A plus 2C. Vector A plus 2 times vector C. Okay, so you should get this. Vector A. This is vector C here, but we got 2C. So if we use our grid here to make this a little bit easier. Well, let me just copy it. 1C. 2c, that's going to give us a resultant which looks like that. Okay, finally, I would like for you to do vector A minus vector B. Okay, so vector A looks like this. This is vector B, so minus vector B is going to be the same magnitude but opposite direction. So that is minus vector B. So we get vector A plus a negative vector B, which leaves us with a resultant that looks like this.